Welcome back. Um, this section of our training will be dedicated to machine learning. So let's start. So in here, we will be discussing why we use uh, machine learning, uh, what kind of uh, what kind of problems we can solve with the machine learning. We'll take a look at a specific implementation of the machine learning algorithms inside the Creatio product. Um, we'll talk about various things where we see the industry going in the future, the trends, and we'll give you some examples how you can start implementing and what kind of uh, benefits you might expect to derive by relying on AI slash ML technology in the Creatio. So before, before we get going, uh, let's just settle down on some definitions. Um, so we've got a lot of definitions, a lot of hype around uh, AI. And um, if you're not, if you're not in the industry, if you're not actively following that, you might be getting a little bit confused between all these terms that are thrown around. Um, so let's start off by discussing what data science is. Uh, data science is an art of analyzing a lot of information, a lot of data. And data science usually concentrate itself on searching for patterns and turning data into information. Um, in data science, you use a lot of graphs, a lot of stats, just to make sense of the enormous amount of data that is currently available. Usually it's performed by data scientists. Um, they use various programs that are not low code. They're, they're stats, they're, there's a lot of math in it. So that's basically a data, a data science. So it's, it's the discipline that kind of borders the stats and the computer science. Um, and it's actively and heavily used in machine learning in artificial intelligence and the areas that are of interest to us. Now, the artificial intelligence is any technology that allows computers to simulate human behavior. Um, so in AI, we're trying to mimic the way humans make decisions, whether it's uh, to classify something as red or yellow, or whether it's to synthesize a speech, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. We're trying to mimic how uh, people make a decision and then apply that knowledge to the computers. And that whole thing is called artificial intelligence. Now, artificial intelligence consists of many areas, one of subsets or, or one area of the artificial intelligence is machine learning. Machine learning is basically an approach that uses stats to enable machines to make a better decision. So machine learning allows us to analyze enormous amount of information. It allows us to find patterns that humans would not be able to find, build certain models, build certain predictions, and then that whole ecosystem works to make a better experience for the user. So in a lot of t in a lot of cases, for example, if you think to your favorite translation or if you think to your favorite predictors, maybe when you watch a movie and then you see that something is recommending you, or perhaps you may want to look at this movie, or perhaps if you purchased one product, then, uh, then something is going to recommend that perhaps you may want to like another product. So those are the areas of machine learning. And then there is a deep learning. A deep learning is really um, mimicking the way our brain works. So we have a lot, a lot of new, uh, neurons in our brain and the computer models are basically mimicking the way our brains are built. And there's a lot of connections between various neurons and virtually we're creating similar experience, how the information is processed by activating various neurons and calculating various weights. And there's a lot of stats and a lot of math behind it. But all we need to know is that deep learning is really trying to mimic the way your brain works and apply that within the constraint of a computer today. Um, so deep learning allows you, uh, the best examples is probably by larger guys like Google, for example, where, with the inception model where they can recognize various images where they can do, where they can synthesize almost human-like speech. Deep learning is used to even find patterns um, that the human brain is not capable of finding. So um, again, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but deep learning is a subset of machine learning, which is a subset of artificial intelligence. So this diagram kind of identifies what we're talking about. So let's take a look at the 
uh, objectives that the organizations might be pursuing uh, when implementing AI within the organization. So one of the objectives is going to be automation of routine and manual tasks. Um, so that could be uh, perhaps routing requests from one department to another. Uh, let's assume that you're getting those tickets. You may you may know that you know you're you're filing a ticket. Something is not working in our system. It's called cases, and you want to. Uh, route them to the proper department. So routing might be one area where automation um, is being sought after, right? So that's that's a very mundane task. Another area of automation is perhaps image recognition. Think of all the paperwork that the accounting department is processing. Um, so people are after some machine systems that are able to look at the document and say, yes, this is an invoice. It should go to one department, whereas this is not an invoice. Perhaps it should go to a legal department, etc., etc. So that allows you to minimize the amount of manual touches that happen within uh, your organization. Now, the reason you're doing it is not just to cut costs. That's one objective, and that's an important one but it's also to minimize the amount of errors and mistakes and inconsistencies that you might have in your current process. I mean, if people are coming and going into those usually starting positions, then you're probably going to have quite a turnover in those positions and you're going to be training people and we all make decisions differently. And this difference, um, th these inconsistencies, they cost a lot. They cost a lot of not following procedures in the same way every single time. So people want to eliminate those, but the, they're too hard. So we need to use AI to implement uh, or to uh, to help us. Now the customer experience improvement, um, here you could see that 40% is kind of uh, boxed in the frame. And that's because this is the most prominent and the most kind of anticipated uh, for many area where AI can really benefit the companies. The customer experience improvement, that's where we're thinking about removing those templated emails and introducing really custom experiences, custom journeys that the user experiencing when dealing with the organization. Perhaps we can think of some chatbots that instead of answering just some templated pre-programmed answers can generate ideas based on the interaction that the bot is having with the user at that time. So again, that's a little bit of a, out of uh, maybe in the future, but this is where the industry is going towards right now. Now the cost reduction is quite obvious. Uh, many organizations are looking to remove or eliminate positions um, that are doing repetitive tasks and they're trying to obviously streamline and, and, and remove the human involvement therefore reducing the cost of production, the cost of whatever it is that you're trying to do. So the cost production is also uh, one of the highest rated expectations from the AI. And then the last and probably the most challenging one is when AI is going to try to assist professionals in making very complex decisions. So for example, in science, you probably heard of proteins and you heard of DNA decoding, right? So this is where AI is trying to really co come in and help scientists make decisions and make discoveries. Um, so this is a totally different area. We're not going to look at it than the framework of Croatia, obviously, but that's, that's an area that a lot of expectations are present for the AI. So let's take a look at the advantages of having the AI uh, summarized in a slightly different way. So the machine learning algorithm can find complex patterns that humans cannot. Well, think about yourself and put yourself in a position where you're given or when you're presented with the a large amount of data, perhaps a couple of sheets of numbers, and you need to make sense out of it. Well, if you're looking at a tabular data, perhaps if it's got two, three, or four columns, you can see some patterns and you could see how perhaps one uh, column is affecting the total output and it's humanly possible to uh, comprehend three, five, maybe variables. But when you're starting to have more, when you have 10 variables or maybe hundreds of variables and you don't have just 20 or 30 examples, but you have hundreds of thousands of those examples to fully understand the data, 
you can do it within your brain. So the machine learning algorithms, they're really good at analyzing enormous amount of information. The other advantage of the machine learning is that even if you're a genius who can comprehend and who can understand the correlations in the data and you can find all these patterns, once you find them, and it's probably going to take you a while, once you find them, what happens three months down the road? What if the data changes? How can you know that your model still applies? So the machine learning algorithms and the AI is really good at just retraining. I mean, you just run the program one more time on the new set of data and you retrain your model. So your models are always up to date. Now with a human approach, that's simply impossible. No one's going to be sitting there and reworking this stuff over and over again. So the machine learning approaches are really suitable for taking the most recent, the most relevant data and making decisions on the most recent experiences. Machine learning algorithms are able to analyze a huge amount of data. Like I said, if you have a lot of stuff that you need to work through, if you have a lot of data that is coming to you, not just in one tabular form, but it's something is coming from social media, something is coming from the manufacturing, something is coming from uh, perhaps some other sources of data, and you need to put it all together and to find correlation between all these different areas, then perhaps machine learning is way better suited than any human brain can. Now the human brain and the um, the need for your human brain is still there. You still need to have a hypothesis. You still need to predict what might have a relationship, but then to test those relationships, leave that to AI. Now within the um, creatio, the good thing is that you don't need to know all those complexities. You don't need to how to solve uh, regression or how to solve uh, complex equations. In Creatio, we're trying to make it super simple for you. So you don't need any data science knowledge to understand how things are working behind the scenes. But what you do need is you need to have a gut feel, you know, that visceral feeling that something is affecting something. And then you just simply test. You know, you, you can have a lot of predictions and you might say that, Perhaps the amount of calls that I place to my customer will eventually affect the total amount of sales that I do with that customer. If this is your prediction, you can easily test it with the Creatio. And you can test many, many different models and you will see which ones work. And this is the advantage of using the low-code tools that you don't need to worry about the complexities of the machine learning, of the algorithms, of data collection, of anonymity, and all that great stuff that is happening be be, uh, behind the scenes. You just simply need to select the data and test your hypotheses. Machine learnings also allow you to remove or free people from mundane tasks. I mean, if you think about your work, and I don't know obviously what you do, but if you think about the work on a regular basis, usually you have 20 to 40% at least of the tasks that you do every single day and they're not creative. They're just there and it's a cost of doing things, right? It's a cost of being employed and they're repetitive and you want to automate them, but it's too difficult to automate them. So the machine learning and the AI will allow you to automate some of those tasks. So perhaps when we're looking at a standard you know, maybe a document flow. Let's take a look at the document flow. For example, if the document's crossing your desk all the time and you need to classify them, you know, left pile, right pile, then perhaps AI can do that for you. The same thing can be said about, you know, any, uh, any other mandate task. For example, you need to call the customer and you need to offer them something. And how do you offer them? Well, you know what to offer them because you were, let's say, in sales, but you don't need to think about it anymore. The machine can do it for you and you can rely on the machine to actually do that type of stuff for you. So let's take a look at what benefits we can expect from AI. Well, as it turns out that implementing even the most basic elements of the machine learning, and I'm not talking about the whole, you know, from A to Z implementation, I'm talking about small touches of AI. So maybe a little bit on the classification, maybe a little bit on predicting who or what kind of lead is the most promising, which one is the most prominent, right? Who you should be calling. Um, you can expect in some cases, some companies have enjoyed 50% more leads or they've enjoyed uh, call time reduction. So your conversation is no longer taking maybe combined 
conversation with the customer is not taking hours, but perhaps it could be reduced down to 20, 30 minutes across multiple calls. You're also enjoying a cost reduction because you're doing things more efficiently. And the reason you're doing it more efficiently is because the machine learning and the algorithms, they can look at the perfect customers and in the group of perhaps those who are sitting in the pipeline, the AI can detect which ones are more likely to be your type of customer, your happy path customer, and you will concentrate on them first. So you can rip the benefits of those easy sales first. But unfortunately, um, humans cannot really do that well. And even if you can do that well, you cannot do that consistently well, perhaps only for a short period of time. Now, all that is great, but well, what's in the future? Well, the researchers who are concentrating now on looking into what AI is going to bring the advantages, the complexities, I believe that by 2022, more than half of enterprise applications will use AI or ML to a certain extent. Now, those elements in some organizations obviously will be utilized a little more and in some other organizations will be utilized a little less, but nonetheless, it's expecting that half the enterprises will use AI and ML to make decisions to improve user experience to a certain extent. So that's important. So knowing that and knowing the advantages, let's now take a look at how this stuff actually works.